Okay, so I think that a lot of you have heard that presentation like uh, three or four times, but maybe in some different form. So I wanted to, to show the same thing, but in, in a different way. Uh, in the way that will allow you to, to have some takeaways to use it uh, later. But we don't have too much time, so maybe we will just start. Okay, so uh, all the presentation is about refactoring. So first thing, you just need to know that you need to refactor. And how do you know that you need to refactor? And there are some clues. And the first one if, is that uh, you are modifying the same code over and over again especially when there is no change in the requirements. Maybe there is an, an addition to requirements. For example, your class should do something more. But uh, if you, your class should do something more, probably you just need to extend it, not to modify it. So if you modify the same class over and over again, probably you are just violating uh, open close principle. If you've got a lot of merge conflicts, or you are breaking one functionality by fixing or developing another one, you probably violate single responsibility principle. And if you don't understand the code, you already get the problem. The, uh, there is a question. Uh, if I'm really bad developer, if I need to refactor, I don't think so. I think that code is evolving in really small steps. So you are adding like two lines of code, three lines of code, five lines of code. But after a year or two, you actually end up with class that have like 1,000 of lines. But, and you think like, I never add more than 10 lines. Why I have so big class? And that's why, you, that, that's why it's not so bad to, to, to refactor, because it's natural. And you never know well, uh, where you will finish. So for example, you have some uh, assumptions. You start to code. Then you finished, and you know, like, OK, I, I have learned a lot of things writing it. If I uh, know these things before, if I knew it, then I will write it different. And that's another reason to refactor. Uh, requirements tend to change. Uh, and for example, you wrote the code, then the requirement changed, and you realize that your architecture is, is not so good for that, for that requirement as it was before. And I think that if you. If you see that you need to clean up your code, you already won. You, you, you are already better developer uh, than you were when you were writing that code. So, so I think it's, it's good. And uh, how to find refactoring opportunities? I think that the most generic and common uh, advice is just follow the if. If you, if you have a lot of ifs in code and uh, it's hard to understand them. It's actually the point to, to refactor. Uh, I think that the ifs belong to two places in code. The first one uh, is factories and builders. The second one is business requirements. If business requirements uh, need, need, need some conditional statements, it's OK. But if you are writing a lot of conditional statements just to have your pieces of code uh, working together, it's some kind of wrong. So if you find some if statements, complicated if statements, with some repeatable uh, structure, like this one at the left bottom, then you probably know that something is wrong. And uh, I, I don't have so much time to, uh, to tell you about all the flavors in the code that I, I used to find, but I want to say about two. The first one is object schizophrenia. And uh, it's not a. It's not the exact term for object schizophrenia. It's some kind of it's some kind of different thing in computer science. But I think that in this case, it's uh, really intuitive that our object thinks that it's one of the three objects. So, for example, I've got the select component, and as you see, it is uh, it has three uh, three flavors. It can be single select, multi picker, multi select. And how can I find it in code? I've got the same if as, as I see um, uh, in the HTML I've got uh, in the TypeScript. It's like it's the same class, but working as three different classes. And it's really easy to diagnose. It's also really easy to, to, to uh, repair that class. Just copy that class uh, as many times as you need. So if you've got like three flavors of the same class, just copy it three times. 
then use that original component as a facet. It's really easy in Angular. You just need to pass all the inputs uh, inputs uh, to the to the lower level components, and you've got another thing to do. You just need to uh, proxy all outputs. It's really easy to proxy that output. As you see, see here, uh, it's really easy in template. At the right side, it's really easy uh, in the TypeScript code. So if you uh, treat that, that original class as a facet, and then you will do these two things, so pass the inputs and proxy, proxy all, uh, all outputs, you will have a uh, working class. And what's even more funny, you've got three times more code. So probably something is wrong. Then comes another step. You just need to reduce the code. And reduction is really easy. If you have spot this uh, conditional statements, then it's really easy uh, to reduce them in the exact uh, single uh, implementations. It's really simple. It, it works like a charm. Probably you will uh, remove a lot of code. The code will be easier. Uh, the second thing uh, uh, is uh, single responsibility principle or open close principle violation. You can spot it in the same way. You can just find some ifs. And if you see that there is a terminology and not from your domain, it, it, you actually found the spot to, to extract. And how to extract? I always use a notepad and pen, and I'm writing all the use cases. Uh, what, what is going on in this uh, piece of code that I want to extract? Then I wrote uh, interface, uh, and I always try to guess what, will I, uh, what I will need to, to fulfill all the requirements that I have, have before. And how can I validate if my uh, interface is OK? I just need to put it in the code. So in, in the case of uh, single, in the side component, I put that interface in the code, and I replaced all the stuff at the left by just two single methods. And then I validated that it's, it's a good thing. If the code is less readable after such change, you just need to revert. Maybe this is not the good uh, candidate to extract. And and of course, uh, the one side is to, to replace the, the, the old functionality by new interface. The other thing is to implement that interface. And you can do it in two steps. Maybe you can just take all the uh, conditional statements that were, were there before and put it into the single class. Or you can just build some uh, family of classes, some awesome decorators, etc., etc. But uh, it's the second part of job. If you will extract it and it work, it's already a uh, nice thing. Then you can refactor the, that extracted part. And uh, I just want to uh, have quick sum up. One is that if you have object schizophrenia in your code, if you diagnose it, then you can just duplicate the code and reduce. And if you have violated some one of the two principles, you just need to extract some code. Uh, and I think it's, it's really easy, and you should just use the strategies. And there is one thing that can help you a lot. Just write unique tests. Unique tests are usual, should be simple. As you see, there are real unique tests. They are really simple, really descriptive, and they will guide you through all the process and they will uh, they will help you to to be safe during the, the refactoring so uh, I think that's all I, I hope that you will have some some takeaways and if you go back to your station you will be able to to do the same thing thank you <laughs>